Hello everyone, hope you're having the most wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. For today's video, we're going to discuss some more Ink Master cast members and reveal how they're doing now. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content guys. Tattoo Baby Making her debut in the second season of the show, Tattoo Baby aka Catherine Flores established herself as a force to be reckoned with. Inspired by artists like Steve Butcher and Jose Lopez, Flores' style mainly focused on hyper-realism and boy are her pieces a sight to behold. Coming into the competition with only 6 years of experience, which was nothing compared to artists like Steve Teft who had 17 years under his belt, she still got pretty far considering. By the 12th episode, after some fierce competition, she was eliminated ranking in 4th place, which is still pretty impressive. Though this wasn't the end of Tattoo Baby on Ink Master since she was invited to return for the 3rd season. This time around, Flores was able to make it all the way to the semi-finals thanks to her exceptional skills. In the end though, she ranked in 3rd place right below Jimmy Litwak and Joey Hamilton who was ultimately the winner. Since she was so loved, she did return for the Ink Master Christmas special called Mary Ink which featured her and other fan favorites. Following her time on the show, Flores went on to star in a reality show called Cartel Crew on VH1. The series sheds light on the day-to-day -day lives of people who are connected to drug cartels or organized crime mobs. As revealed in the show, Flores is the daughter of a New York drug kingpin from Queens, but he was murdered when she was just 4 years old. Due to the tragic loss of her father, she decided to follow a different path and has made a name for herself in the tattoo and reality TV scenes. Although she didn't completely isolate herself from men with criminal behavior since she had a child with Eddie Soto who spent 5 years in prison on drug charges. While she tried to build a life with this man, he was bad news and cheated on her so they didn't work out. That aside, Flores opened a shop of her own called Till the End Tattoos located in Miami, Florida where you can get inked up by the talented artist herself. Her shop also has a wide range of other artists that are extremely talented so even if you weren't able to book her since she's in high demand, you'd be satisfied either way. Impressively, Flores has tattooed a list of celebrities and athletes including big names like Jason Derulo, Rick Ross, Dwayne Wade, and more. Thanks to her talent and renown, Tattoo Baby was crowned as one of the 10 leading names in the tattoo world by Ink Magazine. Recently, Flores participated in a very interesting bet between YouTube star Jake Paul and former UFC welterweight champion Tyron Woodley. After a painful loss, the loser would be forced to get a tattoo that read I Love Jake or Tyron by Tattoo Baby herself. Even though Woodley promised that he would go through with the tattoo if he lost and even revealed where he would put it, he flaked on the bet after being defeated. Assuming you'd like to keep up with Flores and how she's doing, you can check out her Instagram which has a massive following. There, she posts photos of some of her best tattoos, gives her followers a peek into her daily life, and shows off her adorable son Danito. We're incredibly happy to see her doing so well. Jimmy Snaz First appearing in the 11th season of the show, Jimmy Snaz, also known as Jimmy McKenzie, appeared on Ink Master several times. Having been raised into the Boston graffiti scene as a teen, McKenzie was already a talented artist before he ever dipped his toes into the tattoo industry. Though, once he did so, he was able to transition smoothly into inking and made a name for himself ever since. With an impressive 11 years of tattooing under his belt, Mackenzie's debut seemed to be really promising. Considering the fact that he had a neo-traditional style, his tats were always bold, beautiful, and readable from across the room. Sadly though, his work in the 9th episode of the season was lacking and he was ultimately eliminated which was pretty disappointing. As mentioned though, Mackenzie returned to Ink Master later on down the line, the next time being on Ink Master Grudge Match. Facing off against one of his rivals from the previous season, Angel Rose, the two fought it out to settle their grudge. Fast forward to around a year later, Mackenzie was back on the main show competing against gifted artists across the country. Although due to the lovely circumstances of the 2020 outbreak, the show was forced to cancel the finale. While the outcome of the season was pretty anticlimactic, all three of the finalists were crowned as winners. Not only did Mackenzie finally get his first win, but so did Rose and Bob Jones as well. The three decided to split the $100,000 prize amongst themselves which is still quite nice. Following his time on the show, Mackenzie continued to work as a tattooist at North Street Salem and he's constantly booked. According to the Speakeasy Tattoo and Gallery Instagram page, he also does work for them from time to time. Completely dedicating himself to his craft, Mackenzie hasn't done too much else other than post on his personal Instagram. Amassing over 100,000 followers, he mostly posts pictures of his best pieces but will sometimes take selfies or random videos. Consider giving him a follow if you're a fan of his work. We're sure you won't regret your decision. Jimmy Litwak Yet again, we're going to discuss a contestant who's competed on the show more than once, being Jimmy Litwak. After 20 years in the tattoo industry, Litwak decided he would show off his talent in the third season of Ink Master. 
Thanks to his signature classic new school style, he's won several awards, magazine mentions, and feature articles over the years. On top of all this, Litwak was a true perfectionist, giving him a massive edge over the other contestants. Quickly establishing himself as a force to be reckoned with, you'd be right to assume that he'd get very far into the competition. Surprisingly though, Litwak was bested by a contestant named Joey Hamilton, who had 16 years under his belt. Regardless of his loss, the talented artist left a lasting impression on viewers, which is why he was invited back onto the show for the seventh season. This time around, he was competing against other Ink Master veterans as well as some newcomers, which made for a very interesting season. Since the competition was fierce, Slipwalk went from being a runner-up to ranking in 8th place out of 16 contestants. As mentioned in a previous entry, he also went on to be featured in the Ink Master Christmas special. Other than appearing on Ink Master, Litwalk's work was featured on shows like The Real World, The Life of Ryan, and Nitro Circus. Following his time on the show, he hasn't gone on to do all too much other than further his tattooing career. Most notably, while he used to be an artist at Hart and Huntington Co. for several years, he currently works at Built for Speed Tattoo in Orlando, Florida, which has good reviews. If you head over to his personal Instagram, he's amassed close to 250,000 followers and mostly shows off his work. In recent times, Litwak was featured on the Dip and Rip podcast alongside a fellow tattooist named Joe Capobianco, which was hilarious to listen to since they just dog on a bunch of things. Assuming you are interested in supporting this contestant, you can actually buy some of his original arts and more on his Etsy. The prices aren't too bad, especially considering how beautiful his artwork truly is. It's nice to see that he's doing so well. Steve Teft Debuting in the second season of the show, contestant Steve Teft fought his way to the top with his terrifying skills in the most literal sense. Ever since Teft was a child, he claimed to have always had a fascination with tattoos and scary imagery which sprouted after he saw a Grim Reaper inked on someone's arm. Inspired by artists like Tom Berg, Mike Rubendahl, and Eric Merrill, Teft specializes in realistic portraits and horrific imagery. Coming into the competition with 17 years of experience, the talented artist was able to make it all the way to the finals with ease. In a close battle between him and a contestant named Sarah Miller, who only had 6 years of experience, he obviously came out on top. Crowned as the second official winner of Ink Master, Teft also received a hefty $100,000 prize, which must have been life-changing. Having opened a shop of his own in Groudon, Connecticut called 12 Tattoos, he owns and operates the place by himself, which takes up most of his time. Despite being the winner of the second season, Tef seems to have the smallest following on Instagram out of the people we've covered thus far. It's more than likely due to the fact that he doesn't post very frequently, but we don't blame him considering how much he has on his plate. If you're interested in getting a tattoo from the man himself, check out the 12 Tattoos website to book an appointment. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel, I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Let us know who you think might be the best cast member on this list. Subscribe for more content like this and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one guys!